I grew up my whole life trying to only date a certain type of person, look a certain type of way, fit into the like world I was in. And it, as much as I don't care, you you care because it's of this course. feeling of like of it's your identity. It's 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 who you are. It's where you come from. And so it's important for other people listening to hear their name, feeling like they can grow up in a world where they can proudly own their name. And I feel really excited that we're now in a world where being yourself is actually considered cool. And I hope I hope your daughter and son grow up in a world that. Um, you're actually encouraged and you can thrive and make it because you are different from everyone else. Jay Sean's Basement Banter. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Basement Banter. I am, of course, Jay Sean. Got my boys here. Woody, Todd, how are we doing, so, fellas? Good, good man. How are you? everybody out there? Good. You know what? For a long time, it's been a lot of sort of testosterone on our podcasts. So I thought I'd even it out. I've got two ladies with us today. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. One Lucky of them guy. Being, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little clue there. But one of them being the missus, uh, Tara. Tara, what's up? Hello, everyone. Yeah, so Tara's with us. And we also joined with a wonderful friend of ours. But also, you know, I've got, I can't, can't just sort of just leave it at a friend. I've got to do the big up. You know what I mean? Because there's always the necessary big up for the people who are listening. So Deepika Mutiala is a beauty entrepreneur, a businesswoman founder and CEO of Live Tinted, a multicultural community about beauty and culture. And if you can see her right now, she's, she's giving it the large one. Uh, <laughs> she's been featured in Forbes magazine, Elle and Vogue, as well as the Today Show, Dr. Oz. I haven't even been on these. <laughs> what the bl- Anyway, we're very lucky to have her here today. Deepika, what's happening? Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, you see our little sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are fancy. Yeah, we're a little bit fancy here. Um, what's happening? Where are you? What's going on? Talk to us. Where are you in the world right now? I am in Los Angeles and getting ready to move to Texas. And so everything in my life is in boxes right now, but it's all good. I'm excited to go back home. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay, and thank you for taking this time to join us today. And a lot of the people so, you know, who listen to Basement Banter know that we cover a broad spectrum of things. It can one minute we can have Sean Paul on, one minute we got some someone talking about God, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. and you know, then we got like health and wellness. But you, and we do what we like to do is to sort of cover guests who have wonderful, interesting stories. And your story is fascinating. So can you break it down? Obviously, I've just told people what you do and and all the fancy stuff. But how did you start to get into this? What, like, where did you start and how did you end up here? Can you break it down for us? I'm going to do my best to break it down. Okay, so grew up in Texas, like I mentioned, and I was always surrounded by a lot of blonde hair, blue eyes, lots of exactly Mm. what you would imagine life (laughs) in in Texas. Texas. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so I grew up, I literally dyed my hair blonde and got blue contacts because I wanted to look like everyone I saw, you know, right. We all, I feel like we all went through that. Yeah. I definitely had blonde hair at some point. (laughs) Wait, you guys are saying this so casually. What? (laughs) And it's not like the cute Beyonce blonde, right? Like it wasn't like I was like, trying to be Beyonce. I was trying to be like Britney Spears, you know, like every iconic person you saw in the media was who I was trying to portray because that was the standard of beauty that was considered beautiful. So anyway, so like I grew up in Texas with this mindset. I remember being 16 years old and telling my very traditional parents who wanted me to be nothing more than a doctor. I think we all have that part of our Mm -hmm. story um, that I wanted to start my own beauty brand. And I, because I remember going down like the drugstore aisles and seeing a lot of the same thing, like everything from the marketing down to the actual products created were not created for people with my skin tone. And that just like, at a, I, it, what I feel so lucky about is I knew at a very young age that this is what I was meant to do. So I've been able mm-hmm. to do everything from 16 to now to sort of shape to get to where I am now. So um, it was not linear. It was a big roller coaster and it was a lot of hard work. But basically after that, I went to the University of Texas and majored in marketing and made it a plan. I was like, I'm going to work for the biggest beauty brand in the world and then go to Harvard Business School, make my parents happy so they can have bragging rights to their friends and and then go start my own brand. And then 
it didn't go that way. I didn't end up getting the job at L'Oreal. They told me I wasn't a strong enough marketer. LOL. Um, and <laughs> they, and then I ended up at a beauty startup. It was called Birchbox. Do you know what that is, Tara? I do. Heard of they it? send products every month, right? Yeah. The so they were like, the, and- exactly. Yeah. So they were probably the first brand or company to do like the subscription model where you get beauty samples sent to mm-hmm. your door based on like a beauty profile. And then after that, there was like Bark Box and all the different boxes, right? Um, anyway, so while I was there, that's when like this thing called an influencer started to rise and people were getting paid on that thing called YouTube to make videos. And it was like, I was just watching this all go down. And I was like, damn, there's nobody who looks like me doing this. And what I realized was if I wanted to one day start my own beauty brand, like there was this sort of moment of like representation that needed to exist to show people who look like me how to use makeup. And so honestly, I didn't think much of it. In January of 2015, I picked up my iPhone. I held it vertically instead of horizontally, like the crappiest production ever, um, (laughs) and filmed a video using red lipstick under my eyes to mask dark circles. And that video went viral and changed my entire life. It was- Okay, let's just break down that moment for a second. Um, You don't accidentally put lipstick under your eyes. (laughs) So how did you, you figure this? <laughs> nah, I mean, I probably would. Us guys probably would. That's sort of how much of an idea we have about makeup. But how did you, uh, you didn't, did you go to makeup school to understand those elements that what takes what shade and cancels this and blah, blah, blah? Or did you just sort of trial and error? You know what? I, because I've been so obsessed with me, I'm not a makeup artist by any means. Um, right. That's a whole artistry on its own. But I was doing a lot of photo shoots when I was working at Birchbox. And one of the makeup artists, used a product under my eyes that looked like a red lipstick. And I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Can we cuss mm-hmm. on this? I yes, feel like we can. Yeah, I was like, fuck. what the fuck? You fucking will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I was like, what the fuck are you doing using a red lipstick underneath my eyes? And um, she was like, it's not, it's a color corrector. And I was like, well, what's the difference? Um, and so she basically was like, honestly, not much. The reality is that nobody really knew about this because this is a beauty concern that's specific to people of color primarily Mm -hmm. like people with deeper skin tones more so suffer from hyperpigmentation and dark circles in the spectrum of things everyone has it but more so so it was never really prioritized by people to make it a category in space to create a product specifically for this need um Mm -hmm. and so i'm all about like simplifying your beauty routine so i was like okay well if it's the same thing i'm just gonna do it and so i just posted the video and i had no clue 10 million people would have their eyes on it i mean it was it was wild it was your yeah. first video? It was my second video ever. Oh, I didn't man. have ad revenue activated. I'm like, damn, I could have made some money off that video. I just, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But, I've got but, so many questions about that. So yeah, carry on, okay. carry on. I was just going to say, so like BuzzFeed picked it up and I remember sitting at my desk at work and somebody was like, holy shit, BuzzFeed just featured your video. You're going to go viral. And in my brain, I was like, okay, yeah, this will be like a cool moment in my life. I can like, you know, laugh about it. I never would have thought that I would get an email from the Today Show. Literally, I remember that same day and I quit my job that day. I like just had this like gut moment of like, wow. this was the sign I needed to, wow. in my so brain. You, I was, just got the chills. So you went Hollywood real quick, has one viral video. I'm out, I bitches. Like, I'm, I'm making yeah. it. No, in my Listen, in I'm my famous head, now. <laughs> well, in my head, I saw like a whole, like, I'm going to be the Indian Hoda. I'm going to go on the Today it. Show and I'm going to be a host and it's going to be my yes. new career. Like I had a whole vision of that. And everyone around me was telling me that's not how it works. They were like, girl, you go on there once. It's a cool moment in your life. And that's <laughs> going to be that. And then you move on. Wow. Um, I just had this gut feeling of like, this was a moment and I could take this 15 minutes of fame Mm. And have it be a cool moment, or I could turn it into my dream career, and I—that's what I did. Good for that's you. Amazing. That's amazing. Crazy, yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, you can't plan to go viral. We we try a lot. We, <laughs> right. we really we really try. Um, and so that's just an amazing sort of situation that came about, uh, almost like one of those. You know, if you believe in the universe and you believe in all the paths, that it's just like I guess this shit was meant to be. 
And that's, that's really what I feel like. So what I did the Today Show, my sister was my model on air. My dad was backstage sitting next to Kid Rock. And he just was like staring at everything happening. And he was like, what, what is my daughter's life? And yeah. I remember before I went on air, I was like, I had that Eminem song, uh, Lose Yourself. You have one shot, one opportunity. Like I just <laughs> yeah. kept like reciting that in my head. And I was like, this is my moment to show that like brown girls can be hosts and be on TV. And I was so not nervous. I just felt like I was in my element. And, mm. and I remember right after the segment was over, I was like, this is great. Let's do it again. And everyone was like, okay, lady, move on. We're going to the next segment. Um, but then the senior producer comes in and she was like, that was great. And we'd love for you to come back and do this regularly. And I was like, this felt like it was out of a movie. And it's crazy because my dad was like fanboying in the corner and taking a video. So I have this all captured. Um, wow. She just was like, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm in a senior executive here at the Today Show. We can't believe this is your first time doing national television. We'd love to have you back monthly doing different segments for us. And wow. I was like, oh my God, I am the next Hoda. This is literally what's <laughs> happening right now. It was so dope. But you know what's crazy is, um. so then yeah, I had quit my job and I was doing the beauty influencer thing on air TV hosting. And to be honest, I, the on air TV thing was crucial because my dad telling his friends that his daughter was a YouTuber was like, really like not okay, but yeah, saying yeah, like, Oh, my yeah. daughter's on the today show. Yeah, like, of course. Right. You know? Um, so anyway, for like three years, for three years, I've been doing the beauty influencer thing and really just focusing on being in as many beauty brand campaigns as possible because I felt like it was so important for the 16 year old me to see myself represented because I didn't have that growing up. And all I kept thinking was I knew I was the token brown girl in like a L'Oreal commercial, um, a Mac campaign, like name the beauty brand. And I feel really blessed that I've been able to be a part of one of their campaigns. Um, and I was the token hundred percent, but I kind of just was like, you know what? There wasn't even a token when I grew up. And the fact that there even is that is progress. And so I sort of just accepted that that was the role I played. And after doing the beauty influencer thing for three years, I was like, I'm ready to start this brand. I've always dreamt of building. So that's what happened. Uh, I, okay. So my, when you tell me this, I feel so proud, uh, of course, cause I, you know, my story's the same, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd look at Usher and Justin Timberlake and I was like, well, where's the Brown version of that? Yep. I wanted to be the brown version of that. But, you know, there's one, the difference with me is I was singing in English. And so if I was to look at it and I look at our demographic, the South Asian population across the world with the second biggest, largest demographic across yeah. the planet. So I knew that the chances of somebody singing English R&B out of India were going to be slim. Mm hmm and there's a billion of us there. So I knew, well, mm -hmm. okay, well, I guess it's even harder now because it's probably good down to someone like me to do it. But there's a billion of them out there. How did there not, how was there not a product for brown skin that yeah, came out of India? No, it's so, it's a good point. It's a few things. Um, I, and it's funny, when I went to investors and stuff, I would say like, there hasn't been a brand for South Asian people created. And all I kept hearing was that's not big enough. Like the market size isn't big enough. And I was like, what? There's a billion of us. Like, what are you talking about? But if you really dwindle it down and think of, I'm sure you heard the same thing on the music side within the US there at that time there's three million of us and if you think about it only half of them are think 50 percent are female within the 50 percent mm -hmm. what's in the target demographic so i had all this noise in my head of like oh damn like maybe maybe it's not big enough and and within india how many of them are in the middle middle class that can actually afford to buy these products all of that um what i realized is like i actually don't I don't give a shit if people feel like it's not big enough because what I do care about is the fact that I feel like my purpose on this, like with this brand is to finally create representation for this audience, whether it is 3 million people or a billion people, that's 3 million people's lives that are impacted. So I really had to like cut out the noise of like, why didn't this exist? Because it's like one of the, it's the same thing until somebody does it, you don't think you can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like this, I'm sure you went through the exact same thing, Jay, until you did it. I can imagine that there was a ton of people who never thought in their wildest dreams that somebody could make it in that space. Mm. So I, I really think that's it. And the other side of it is within India, we're tr so trained that fair is considered beautiful. Yeah. Even in India, uh, colorism mm -hmm. is so real, right? It's wow. so real. So nobody was concerned about like 
the hyperpigmentation stuff, what they were doing was putting bleach cream. Fair and lovely, man. Aye, it was everywhere. Aye. That's all so that, that mattered. It's so yeah. fucked up. So it was the other way around. It wasn't like, let's make a product that fits our skin color. It's let's be a different skin color. Yes. Mm. That is the problem. And what I, you, my dream, I literally mm. have a dream of like a billboard in India that says unfair and lovely. That's like live tinted, you know, like something so powerful. That's like a colorism campaign. And, I'm putting it into the universe so it happens. So one day yes. when we're talking about this, you could be like, remember when you said blah, blah, blah. Do you have any products that can put color into people's like skin like Adams? Because <laughs> that could be the next sort of line. <laughs> Do you tan? No, if I was any more white, I'd be clear. Oh my God. <laughs> clear and lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my shirt like, up. You, can, you can see my heartbeat like a little <laughs> newborn baby fish <laughs> I'm just so oh, curious goodness. Tara like Tara did you avoid the sun growing up like that was what I was told my whole life hide under the umbrella of course if we're, you know? we're not supposed to tan our families don't want us to sit out in the sun um, mm -hmm. you know I totally uh, am with you on the the hair, like I said, I definitely had blonde hair for many years of my life. Um, mm -hmm. I also, my, listen, my hair is not this straight naturally, right? My hair is, mm -hmm. is curly naturally. It's mm -hmm. not super tight curls, but it's curly, it's wavy. And I, I just did not like my curly hair growing up because it made me different from all the other girls that I was growing up around, right? We wanted and I mean, to fit. Exactly. And I, I just think it must really hit you now that you guys have daughter. Is it two daughters or one daughter? Two daughters. One, uh, yeah, one daughter, like, one son. Ari still looks a little bit like a girl. He does. He let his hair grow. <laughs> yeah, the hair, great I like hair. The, long, the long hair. I wasn't sure about the young one. Okay. But your daughter, your, your daughter is just, it, it, it must hit you in a different level, right? Like that now having a daughter, it's like, so, I want her to grow up in a world where she can do her and be her, right? Yes. 100%. I, but what I love that I noticed with her friends from about the age of like three, Mm -hmm. um, so a few years ago, we noticed it. Um, she had a group of friends when we were living in Weehawken and they had this beautiful group. They didn't even have to go to daycare. They would hang out every day. And mm -hmm. one day they all came over. I think it was her birthday and they were all sitting on the couch and I took a photo and I looked at them and I had such a beautiful moment where I was like, this looks like the United Colors of Benetton. Yes! Like mm -hmm. it was so beautiful <laughs> and every I love it. single. I love it. Every single one of the kids was mixed. Mm -hmm. Four of them were mixed Indian. And I was just like, my heart was so happy. Because that was part of the origin of the name of Live Tinted, honestly, because I truly believe the whole world is going to be one big tinted race in the future. Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. We're all just going to be a bunch of mutts, which I love and I'm so excited about. Mm. Right? right? Yeah, exactly. It. So it's... It's really beautiful for me to see how that her generation does see color so differently than how it was for us. Um, I love so that, it. Yeah. It's a weird I mean, one for, yeah. Carry on, carry on, please. Yeah. I was just going to ask if like you experienced your version of that in the music world, you know, where uh, it was like, yeah. you had to look a certain way. Like, did, was it like, did you feel like you had to avoid the sun? No, like no, no. Uh, for me, it wasn't a skin thing. It wasn't a color thing. It was more of a cultural thing for me in music. So what happened was in England, obviously, Indians are the biggest immigrant population. We are mm -hmm. as common uh, as, you know, Hispanic community in America. So mm -hmm. um, for us, you see someone of my color in England, they know you're Indian or Asian, as we call them there. I, I, here, they call them South Asian. In England, we call us Asian. So it's very confusing. Okay. Anyway, you just know we're brown. We're either Indian or Pakistani or Bangladeshi something, okay? When I yeah. came here, you look at my color and they're like, oh, he's, he's Spanish. He's, he must be like uh, from Puerto Rico <laughs> or Dominican. So it was a very, very different thing that happened. So in England, the minute the brown boy came out doing music, they were like, oh, so, you know, you probably do the Bangra thing, right? And I'm like, no. I actually sing sort of pop R and B music, but you're Indian. Yeah. Right. That doesn't mean I have to automatically sort of sing in Punjabi. You, you, right. I'm speaking in English right now to you. If mm -hmm. I add melody to that, it's called singing. 
Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, why do I have to suddenly, when I sing, sing in a different dialect? So it was weird. Um, but so, yeah, that was my sort of story. When I came here, of course, it was a clean slate. They just heard the songs. They looked at me and they thought I was anything but Indian. And it didn't, you know, it didn't, it wasn't a big thing over here. Um, cool. <clears throat> but, you know, the, the question, there's so many questions that I have regarding sort of uh, your space and how you found your niche in the market, because... Um, you know, we were talking to, we, we came across, we were on this show the other day when we came across this, uh, woman who was trying to make uh, her a business out of starting a nude heel that matched every skin color. So normally yeah. that, yeah. right. Because the right. idea that like the nude tone is mm-hmm. not nude. It's, it's not, not the same a color for every woman. <clears throat> What's exactly. that band aid? That's what I said. Is that band aid? Exactly. Well, that's exactly becoming, what yeah. they, yeah. Yeah. that's what she referenced. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I was just going to say the Band-Aid thing. Yeah, it, it's wild to think that it was never thought of before. It's so nude nuts. was just, there was one shade of nude and it was a very white shade. <laughs> Period. I yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? I wonder yeah. sometimes how much guilt do you guys feel when we speak like this when we've got a bunch of South Asians? <laughs> a, fair, a fair bit. I've got to be honest. <laughs> About time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it's just, on the real. Like, it's, 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 we have to sit and go, yes, we are evil. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just love that there's more South Asians on one podcast right now than not, right? Like how yeah. 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 we're all on one side of my screen. <laughs> yeah. Um but it's yeah, it's a, it's a really really interesting thing, right? Because and the yeah. you, like when when you were talking about how you were coming up every month on the Today show and stuff. Now, you said you weren't actually a trained makeup artist. So what were you doing in those beauty segments? Were you actually doing makeup? On people? Fair Getting question. Beauty. Right. Um, yeah, no, but you know, for me, it was all, I was all about simplifying beauty for the everyday girl. And so they mm. wanted me to come on as not a makeup artist, but like a girl who's just a beauty enthusiast, teaching people how to break it down for people. And honestly, the coolest part to me, I just remember like Hoda and Kathy Lee would like come into the dressing rooms before and just chant my name and to, to make sure they said it right, you know, and things like that. Those come little on. moments. They just wow. like they, those moments stick with you, right? Because it's like I I remember going on Doctor Oz and he called me like Dapika Matalia or something like that, mm-hmm. and I was like, and it, it mm-hmm. as much as I don't care, you you care because it's of this course. feeling of like of it's your identity, it's 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 who you are, it's where you come from, and so I make it a point now to make sure that anytime I do mm-hmm. one of these things, people say it right because it's it's mm-hmm. it's important for other people listening to hear their name feeling like they can grow up in a world where they can proudly own their name. Like I used to go by D instead of Deepika, you know, know. like I I, Mm -hmm. always trying to be like somebody I really wasn't. And I feel really excited that we're now in a world where being yourself is actually considered cool. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like about time, right? Because I grew up my whole life trying to only date a certain type of person, look a certain type of way, fit into the like world I was in. And I hope, I hope your daughter and son grow up in a world that um, you're actually encouraged and you can thrive and make it because you are different from everyone else, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. It's really funny. Like, you know, my parent, my grandparents will all, I'll always remember this story fondly. My granddad, I'm sure it's the same for you, your, for your ancestors and your grandparents. When they came over mm-hmm. from England, my granddad had a turban. So to get even a job working in a factory packing sausages, he had to cut his hair because he just looked too different. And they were like, we're not going to, what do you mean? I'm going to give you a job. Not only that, shave his face, change his name because they couldn't pronounce Jeevan. Yeah. His name is Jeevan. Oh. How much easier yeah, it, is it? It gets way harder. <laughs> it gets hard, yeah. <laughs> right. Right, exactly. And, and, you know, then it got to that point where, honestly, even for me, my real name is Gumaljeet. And in school, the difference is, you know, uh, I'm Punjabi, so Punjabi people, you know how it is. Your name could be Harpajan, but you're, they'll call you, I'm going to call you Bobby. And right. it's like got nothing to do with this. It's not even like derived from the same root. Right. It's just like. Where did they get that name from? Okay, you're going to be oh, Tinkle. Bubbles. So, bubbles are yeah, still bubble. everyone ever. They're There's bubbles. a ton of bubblies, lovely jubblies. Yeah, yeah. I have three aunts. I'm not lying. Lovely, jubbly, and bubbly. No, you I'm, don't. I'm not. Listen to me. Three sisters. <laughs> Three God sisters. Them. God bless every one of them. Three sisters. Very joyful sounding house. Lovely, yeah. bubbly, and jubbly. Yeah. So, any- 
<laughs> so, so, so obviously my, my name just was, was Nikka, right? Nikka, because it means small baby. Nikka became Nick, became Nikki. So I became Nick at school. And it was one of those situations where I felt you would never, I think to have that moment now would be so, so different to where back then it was so accepted that because the kids couldn't say my birth name properly, Camel Jit, or they right. thought it would be funny to call me Camel Shit, because that's just completely fine to call me the shit of a camel, uh, which I actually did scar me for a while. Yeah. Um, at the time, I mean, now I look at it and it's quite funny, but yeah. um, to me, obviously, as a grown man, but, but back then it's scarring. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, no, we're going to go. We had to have a meeting. He's now going to be called Nick at school. Wow. Right? And now you imagine that kind of shit going down now. It, it, I don't think it would be that way. It would be like, no, motherfuckers, no. you learn yep. to pronounce yep. his yep. name. I used to dread the first you know. day of school. Because yeah. Tara is spelled T H, so it was always either Tahara or mm-hmm. Thara Prashard. Thara. I'm like they always, and I'm like, oh god, it's not. That's not how you say it. Mm. And then growing up, all my friends definitely called me Tara or Tara. Yeah, of course. And my yeah. dad always called me Tara, and it means star in Hindi, and it's got this beautiful meaning. But I never wanted oh. to own that. So mm. people, my friends would be like. Your dad says your name's so funny, but I, and I was like, I know, right? But wow. yeah, really, you just play into it. Yeah, and it wasn't until I was older, probably around college age, that I was like, no, it's Tara. And actually, no, that's not true. So in high school, I ran for president of the class, and I knew, yes, that, yes right? I was, I was president, <laughs> and I knew that everybody wasn't going to know how to pronounce my name, and that. You know, so my campaign was it's Tara with an H because I'm hungry for your votes. Oh my yes! yes. <laughs> I love that. Hey, Wait, how I long did it take to count that. those votes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of which see I told you Todd, 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 Todd comes Todd, Todd. Todd comes in with the fire once in a while. <laughs> that was good. That was um, good. But yeah, so, I mean it's it's so nice to now love my name and I'm so grateful to my parents for making my name unique. And, and then I did the same thing. We did the same thing to Ava. We decided to add the Y to her name. So the thing that like I hated growing up, we now did to Ava as well, making it a But the time is different now to where like people will, we have a president that was named Barack Obama. Like, you know, it's just things are different now. People have realized it's just like, I, I the same way you had people calling you what, the, the shit thing. Like I was mm. Deepika Kripika. You make me want to puke a Oh my oh, God. Jesus. It's fine. That girl is like living at home right now. And it's like, yes. it, it, yeah. it's fine. Mm. Um, but what's really cool is I think that I, idea of incorporating and being proud of your culture and where you come from is such a big part of what I want to do with my brand and live tinted. It's like, mm. I have never seen a beauty brand embrace where people actually come from. They're always training and marketing people to believe in the brand's identity, mm. not their own identity. And so what I really wanted to do with Live Tinted was it's not like when we launched, it wasn't about a physical product. We launched as a community platform talking about beauty issues like colorism, girls with facial hair. I, Jake, Yo. did you ever make fun? Did you ever make fun of a girl for having a mustache? Jay Listen, Sean, I was, no, I actually didn't. You know what? I was going to talk to you about this is exactly what I, when you were talking about bleaching the skin. I didn't want to interrupt you, but it works for white girls because your your hair will go blonde and kind of sort of just sit there in the mix. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work for Indian girls who then have a blonde mustache. Okay, <laughs> so I did as it. if I had yeah. I it, I did it too. See? I definitely did. See? <laughs> so, it's all right, Adam. Look, Adam's like, can I laugh? I also, <laughs> I'm um, like, oh my god, this parachute is a knapsack. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh. It's okay. Yeah. We're over so, it. so I honestly, I had a friend. I had a friend who was a girl. She wasn't my girlfriend, but we had close friends. And when she, you know, she dyed it blonde, and I was like, she was like, uh, I was looking at her, and and you know, because we're close. And she goes, "What?" I go, "I'm just going to be honest with you. I can see it more now." <laughs> That's nice of you to be honest. Yeah, I go. Listen, it just I can. See, I'm looking at it more now. Because you're drawing attention to it, yeah. right? But but what do you do? Because for the longest time in our culture, 
Sometimes, let's be honest about it. The parents wouldn't even let you shave your hair. Are you kidding? Hair. I had right. to buy, my best friend's mom used hey. to buy my razors because wow. my parents wouldn't let me shave. Meanwhile, I was wearing a skirt to school because mm-hmm. I went to private school and the kids used to all make fun of my hairy legs. Right. Same. Because the other girls, you couldn't see their hair. Right, exactly. Mm. Don't do that to your daughter, girl. Let her no. take care of what she's got to take care <laughs> no, of. And those are the lessons learned. And of course, now my mom... You know, I, I forgive her, but, you know, she has her moments where she feels sorry that it was such a, you know, it's very traumatic. Kids are so mean. I mean kids can, yeah. are, and boy, right? You're also just trying to figure out, like, who you are and you want the attention from guys. And I remember, mm. I remember this guy said to me, it's crazy, right? That I still think I, like, talked to my therapist about this. I was like, man, this guy told me, he was like, you're so mature. You're so mature that you're growing a mustache. And I was like, and it's so scarring right it was like anyways i just think all of those things now are Mm. things are shifting beauty standards are changing and i just wanted to be creating a brand that actually was leading the charge and people embracing where they come from and so to me the physical products we create are important because that's if that's how we're a business but what i get excited about and what like you know when i think about like the footprint I want to leave in the sand. And I, I, I'm sure you both also think about this for your own careers. It's like, I, I want to be remembered as somebody who helped change that narrative for the next generation, where they feel proud of where they came from. They embrace their, their roots. They see their skin tone as a part of their identity that comes from their roots. And, you know, even our first pro- party, I did you tar, but you weren't in town. We did a holy themed party. And I was so proud of that, right? Like, I've been told to not be too Indian, not too American Mm. and that duality of life. Like I just said, fuck it. This is my brand. There is no rules. Mm. I make the rules. And so I was like, what do I want to celebrate? And I wanted to proudly celebrate holy. And I think we have such beautiful things, a part of our culture. Like it's meant to be celebrated. Of course. And, but like, you know what I mean? Like our whole lives, we were told that like be Indian, but not too Indian, be American, Mm. but don't be too. It's like this weird, you just can feel it. It is weird. I'm really glad that we're we're talking about this kind of stuff because it, it's real, it's real shit, you know, yeah. that we've all been through. And like, I always ask, I joke around, with, you know, to, to Adam about it all the time. I'm like, anytime it's super sunny and like we'll be in uh, LA together and stuff and, you know, yeah. the poor bastard just burns. He just <laughs> burns. And meanwhile, I go even more golden brown. Right. And then he oh, looks just- at- even yeah, and he looks at me and he's like, it's not fucking fair, is it? He goes, you're already brown. You just get more brown. And I just burn. And I'm like, yeah. And the funny thing is, people want to tan. Why? To get their skin darker like ours. As about and then you've got... Isn't it funny that as in the idea of physical white beauty is to be a few shades darker and tanned and this, mm-hmm. and you're especially recently adopting traits of like, I want like, you know, big hips and butts and stuff like that. Like yeah. all the things you're, you're appropriating from other cultures. But meanwhile, yeah. let's keep that other culture over there. You know, it's, yeah. it's a very strange. Like the bits we story. like, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you've got, you know, on the flip side, you had uh, uh, people in India walking around with umbrellas because they didn't, well, they want to go the other way. And it's, you know, it is this weird thing where we're like, it, it's so difficult for sometimes for us to be comfortable in our own skin, but that's not necessarily our fault. It's because of the shit that we saw around us, the stuff we see on TV, the way that we're treated by other people. And I do think, I agree with you, that we are really approaching an age where we are all shining a bit brighter in our own skin you know ah, it feels so good yeah I think this idea of colorism is it's become such a people talk about it now ever since what happened this summer with BLM this idea of colorism is something that impacts every culture that basically besides white people is like mm-hmm. you know the black community experiences of the Latinx community it's not just the South Asian community so something I really am trying to do with this brand is make it clear that like colorism is something that can actually connect people from different cultural backgrounds. We all are fighting the same fight of being able to just embrace and love our skin tone. And for every campaign we do, I'm always trying to feature people of color that are on the deeper end of the spectrum as Mm -hmm. much as possible, because that was never shown, man. Like that's, it's so crazy to me. And I think that it's just, that skin tone is just so beautiful, but we need to, we need to remind people of that. Unfortunately, right? Like the media really does, determine people's like value which is Mm. so shitty but so true which by the way i could talk about mental health all day because i was just about to touch on that because something that um you became very quickly a an influencer a youtuber yeah and it does open you up to a vast 
vat of trolls and, and horrible comments and people. How do you cope with that? You just you touched on the idea of mental health. How do you separate yourself from that and, and deal with those kind of negative comments and, and that stuff? Like, what's some strategies that people could adopt? You know, what's, it's, what scares me is that the reason I can deal with it is because I'm 31 and confident enough in my skin at this age to be able to deal with it. Mm. What freaks me out is if I was 17 hearing these things, I'd go in a room and cry mm. because you're still, you're still figuring out who you are as a person, right? Mm. So if somebody makes one comment about anything physically about me, I could care less. I'm confident enough in myself and my skin at this point in my life. If somebody comes for, I post my family a lot. If somebody yeah. comes for my company and my work ethic saying like, oh, she's, she's just uh, tokenizing or things that, things that mm -hmm. attack my character or my family, mm -hmm. I'm like ready to throw a boat. Like, you yeah, know, I'm like, same. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. so defensive because my nephew didn't ask for this. And so like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be protective in a certain layer and lens because people are really mean. But what I think has helped me kind of cope with that um, is it's really more of a reflection on that person. And what I've kind of told myself is it's so sad to think that they're having that bad of a day that they feel like they have to project that onto somebody else that mm -hmm. they've never met and don't even of course. know. And take the time to write a negative comment. Mm. Like just why? But you know no. what I will say, I'm really guilty of one thing I really want to do when I get to Texas, this is all a part of my eat, pray, Texas life is put away my phone on my weekends. Like nobody needs to know what you're eating for dinner. Like every stack, like who cares? I had both of my ex-boyfriends were like fully over it. They were like, put your phone away. And I was like, mm. it's my life. I have to show what I'm doing. And it's like, mm. I actually don't. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, they were right. I hate to admit that part, but yeah, that, that <laughs> is, it, it's real. Like we have to find boundaries and we have to make sure that it, I just, I get so scared for people in high school now. Like there has to be a line. Well, I recently joined TikTok. <laughs> this is a hilarious sentence in itself, but I'm I, a, I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. I've seen your TikToks and they're hilarious. Well, thank you. See, I I was like, I didn't know you were that funny. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, thank <laughs> you. That's funny. why it's his perfect platform. Exactly. Because you yeah. finally get to see his right. true personality. So I get yeah. to be silly and goofy, and I get to be myself on there. But as as a result, because of course I've, I'm now in that TikTok world, and I've seen the real, real big stars of TikTok, and um. God, the amount of horrible comments. It, and these are kids, remember, okay? Yeah. These are kids. A lot of them are sort of 16, 17, and there mm -hmm. are just thousands of comments. Yeah. And I really look at it and I go, I'm a grown man. I can deal with whatever you throw at me, mm -hmm. you know, like you said. But if you're a kid and mm, you become a crazy. star, it's really crazy. Um, I do think that some of them have learned to just not give a shit. And it yeah. probably helps when you have sort of fifteen million dollars thrown at you. So I was gonna you, say, I think the <laughs> financial security helps cope with the pain of the comments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sometimes but yes, but we all know those stories of people who have all the money in the world, but they're still not happy. No, you know, it right? freaks me out to think that like kids growing up are saying, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they say like a TikTok star. Like that's yeah. freaky. Yeah. Right. Well, we were like, talking about this last week, weren't we, with Josh? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. there's literally people that go, what do you want to be? I want to be famous. Yeah, famous, but for what? Right. No, oh. I just want to be famous. To be famous. But, but you know I'll what? Deep, you. Yeah, go. Carry on. I was just going to say, like, I'm actively on the other lens of this. Like, after being so public for the last five years, I am so excited to build a brand where it's all about, it's bigger than me. It is not about me. It's about the community and giving opportunities for other people. I want to, like you know, I just, I just signed with this agency and they want me to get into acting and they want me to do all these other things, right? Like all these opportunities. And it's like, I really want to take a step back and dissect what it is that I want and what does my soul actually want? Not just what the world is seeing as like an opportunity and a, a quick check, because at a certain point you're just numb to it. And it's like, what do you actually want to stand for? So anyways, I think the whole thing of people wanting to be famous is mm -hmm. not is so unhealthy and, and so the opposite lens of how I felt. Like I never cared for the fame that just came with it because I was doing what I loved. Yes. I feel like that's mm -hmm. probably the same with you, right? Like you were doing what you loved. 100%. And it happened to create fame. Yeah, of course. 100%. That's one of his biggest battles that we mm -hmm. talk about often, you know? Yeah. She's like, you don't want to play the game because you don't care for the fame part of it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, but if you want to... 
You it's have sad. to play the game if you're you in this be, industry, you know. right? Like you, you want to go to this, <laughs> like there'll be how many times you told, oh, there's this event, you know, just show up. Uh, why? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to go to bed. I, I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, the first few red carpets, I was like, oh my God, this is the life. I was like figuring out my poses and like all the, you know, whatever. I would be totally fine if I never went to another event again in my life. Because you know what I realized is all that time, the pandemic has made me really realize all that time I was traveling back and forth to New York, to LA, all the events I was doing was taking away from me actually having me time. Like, I don't even know what that means to have me time. Like, mm. when's the last time we like sat down and actually had a night just just alone and felt good about it, you know? I can't wait for that. I would love to, I always felt like having a personal life meant that I wasn't working hard enough. Like I always felt like my mm. work mm. in my brain, like you, it's just a part of it. You have to hustle. You have to grind having, putting your profession before everything is what you do, you know? And now I'm like, okay, the only way my team is going to be sane is if I'm sane mm -hmm. and I'm not that sane right now. So I got to figure mm. out like how right. to disconnect a bit, you know? Yeah. To that end, actually, you kind of touched upon it a little bit there, but it's a question I'd like to ask. You moved to LA, obviously, ostensibly to move yeah, elements of your career forward. And now, because of your, we're all starting to realize that we don't have to be in these grand metropolitan arenas and paying stupid amounts of rent and all kind of crazy shit that we do to be in these, these places to keep yeah. our careers going. What made you move to LA in the first place? And for entrepreneurs coming up behind you, if you were to give them an inspiration of why you can still achieve elements uh, of your career by moving to say Texas or be wherever you are, does that apply to younger people coming up or is that we have to get yourself to a certain place before you can basically have that life where I'm going to step back, I'm going to be over here now. And if you need me, I'm doing this. Like, do you mm -hmm. need to be in these New York LA hubs or London or Paris or is the, the, the world changing? I truly believe with the digital world we live in, you can make your dreams reality from anywhere in the world. And that is such a like dope feeling because growing up in Texas, I felt like I was bigger than Texas. I was like, I got to go to NYU and go to New York city and be an Indian Carrie Bradshaw and just like frolic around. That's from sex of the city reference. I don't know. Boys on here yes. know that. Um, <laughs> but um, totally like that one. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, that was like the dream. And then I get to New York and I, I grinded for five years. My dream of dream was to be at the Met Gala red carpet doing interviews for celebrities. Like that's what I thought I was like my thing. And then I did mm -hmm. it for the Today Show. And I was like, I, I went home that night and this is getting really kind of deep, but like I went home that night and I was like crying and it wasn't mm -hmm. happy tears. It was this like feeling of like, Deepika, this is what you wanted and you just did it, but you still feel so empty wow. and alone. And I felt like I had achieved my ultimate dream of New York. And I just realized I was going through levels of depression and I moved home to Texas for a month mm -hmm. and I like had a reset. I, you know, my dad would make me those things every morning. We walked around the lake and we would just have conversations and he was like, you just don't seem happy. And on the outside, everyone was looking at like, I was thriving, right? Like I was just then I signed like a year long contract with L'Oreal and this Matt campaign and things that I dreamt of, but I was so so sad and it, it's weird how like it, and, and it, it didn't make sense because like on the surface level all of it was fine but you know I was going through a breakup and I just was really down so I moved home and basically when I moved home that month I was like I need a fresh new start and going to LA to me felt like I would get the career benefits of New York but get the space sun uh just a little more chilled out vibes that you get in Texas. So I felt like I was finding my hybrid in LA with that. Mm -hmm. Being here now for three years. Um, yeah, it, it's not that. It, it, mm -hmm. I feel like that same feeling I felt when I was at the end of my New York time where I just felt like I'm going through the motions and hanging out with a ton of people. But despite, you know what really hit me? I really thought about if I left LA tomorrow, who would actually care? And I had that moment and I was like, wow, I can count that on one hand. And mm -hmm. that was kind of for me a signal of like, go home, be the good, just go home. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. you know, I know this um, is like really heavy, but it's real. No, I but this is great. I, yeah, yeah like, absolutely. I, this is what we love. I think COVID has brought that to light for a lot of people too, right? <clears throat> of course it has. Absolutely. I thought this, absolutely. I thought this the other day. I was like, wow, there's a shit ton of people I just don't speak to anymore. And I was like, and yeah. I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And I literally was like, it's all, I'm just seeing, 
It's, it's as like, it's naturally, naturally given us all the people like, oh, you don't need that person. I, I guess that person doesn't. Oh, oh, these are your crew now. Right. And it checks on you. Yeah. Who stays in touch. Who's, who exactly. Out, or like, who only reaches yeah. out when they need something and blah. And you do yeah. realize that you really, really do. And it's, and I love that we're talking about this stuff because this is real life shit. You know, well, I think it's important for shit. people to see the, what you see on Instagram and mm-hmm. all the like cool <clears> shit that's happened in your life. And I, I can speak for my life is that at the end of the day, when you go home and you're by yourself, you start to wonder what's this all for? Like, mm-hmm. I haven't prioritized, like, I haven't been on a date in freaking years. It's just all been work, work, work. And I never cared, which goes into what um, Tara, we were talking about, like freezing my eggs and like recognizing that like, it's not gonna happen anytime soon, but there's nothing I want more than a family. Um, and, you know, it, it all happens the way it's supposed to. It's so fine. you're 31. Like, I, I, 31. You're 31. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, eggs. Let's talk about eggs. Um, <laughs> let's, talk about eggs. <laughs> let's talk about eggs. So obviously I came from a medical, medical background. So, you know, uh, this isn't that weird to me, boys. If you start to get feel weird, uh, talking about sort of reproduction, I'm very eggs. comfortable with this. Great. <laughs> That's a real um, man. I like you, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. That is a real thing that, women in business especially have to think mm. about you know um yeah. you're like you just said you put career and your profession for so many years before everything but yeah. like you still want to have babies and you want a family and stuff like that so talk me through that whole thing and feelings emotions and now this decision to like you say freeze your eggs I think it really hit me when i met my nephew for the first time i like held him in my hands and i was like I want this so bad for myself one day. And I knew if I didn't just take this time to slow down and do the egg freezing now, I would just be, I, I've been talking to a, you know, when it comes to like mentors in my life, I really try to go to people that actually have lived in experience of what I want to do. So one of the people I spoke to was um, the founder of It Cosmetics, who sold her company for $1.2 billion to L'Oreal. And I asked her, her personal life. And she was like, what's that? She was like, I didn't see my kids grow up. I, I never watched them grow up. I, I don't have memories of my kids growing up. My, we had wow. to get help and I didn't. And I just don't want that. Like, I, I don't mm-hmm. want that. I know that as hungry and as um, ambitious as I am, that I, I want to show that you can do it all. It's just about finding levels of what you truly value versus mm-hmm. what arbitrary success levels the world tells you that you need to have. And so for me, I'm at this point where, you know, I'm, I'm doing fundraising and we're going to bring in a, a full staff of people because I don't want to keep doing this where every night I go home and I'm still working. I want to mm-hmm. create a divide mm-hmm. and find my happy, right? Like at the mm-hmm. end of the day, that's all that really matters. So I, yeah, I'm literally starting my egg freezing process next week. <laughs> wow, wow. That's amazing. Good for you. Well, Tara, you're reading that book, aren't you? Uh, You can have it all, not just at the same time or something. Yeah. So, um, well, my aunt actually, my aunt was the first one who ever said that to me. She has four kids and I'll never forget the day we were on a call. And she said to me, Tara, you can have it all, just not necessarily all at the same time. Mm. And I think as women, we struggle so much to have our, to to find that balance of Mm. wanting to have our careers and wanting to have our families and be a good wife. And I I struggle with that. It's, you know, it's total juggling act for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I remember when my aunt said that to me and I really loved it because I, you know, as much as you hear, there are a lot of stories and articles where they say you can have it all. And I'm kind of like, ah, Hmm. You, you right, can't. Right. something has to give right something is gonna suffer mm-hmm. so you do it's good to choose times and go okay this is gonna be my focus right now and i'm gonna focus on my career like right now people um will ask me about my businesses and if i want to have another you know do you want to have another baby and i'm like well that's a different, that's a conversation between the two of us, obviously, (laughs) first and foremost, but I always, (laughs) but no, but I always say right now, I can't even think about that because I just started a new business and I have Mm -hmm. my other business that basically has started from scratch because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I have basically two baby businesses that I'm Mm -hmm. building. So Mm -hmm. as a woman, I know that I cannot possibly think about that 
at this time, right? I have to be everything that I can for the two that I have. And then I've got to take care of my businesses. Um, and I think that as women, that's a real struggle that we yeah, go through. Yeah. You know, and, and I think because of that, and I see what an amazing mom you are and how much you give to your children. I just know that I can't be that right now because right now mm-hmm. my baby is my company. And, right. I, and I have very specific goals for this company before I can feel like I'm ready to be a mom because when I'm a mom, I want to be present. I want to be there. I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to witness, I don't know, all those moments and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I, everything is chapters of life. Right. And I think that that's yeah. okay. And that's a beautiful thing. And I, I'm not going to lie. I get a little anxious about going back to Texas. Cause I feel like, Oh, am I like going mm. back home? Is, is things, are things going to just go back to like normal? Is that, I don't know. I don't, but I kind of feel like we have this, 2021 is a year where things are not going to be like normal. So like embrace it and create a new normal is kind of my mindset. Talking of your goals. Sorry. It's just uh, to that end, you know, you Tara, you know, you are a, a, a mother of two. You have, you say multiple businesses that you're building up at you know, Depica. You are, you know, make, you have your business and you're taking steps to, ensure you have the life you want to live you know later on but still take care of you know your business child yeah. as it were right there if you were to give both of you individually uh like a, a statement of advice or a, a plan for especially for girls in your community uh you know strategically which is very much kind of like either you become an academic or a cleric or a lawyer or a doctor or you become a housewife and you basically have kids and you just like what was something that you wish you could have told your 20 year old selves, both of you, like what would you have said, you know, to further that aim? Hmm. I mean, for me, it's very, it's very easy to say because I felt like I could be the first to do something. And I think a lot of people when they're 20, because they haven't seen it done before, feel like they can't do it. So some, a lot of people, you know, Go be a lawyer if you want to be a lawyer. Be a doctor if you want to be a doctor. But don't do it because you feel like you have to do it, whether it's because of your parents, because you've never seen it done. So you feel like you couldn't be the first ballerina that, you know, uh, performs it, you know, whatever it is. Like, you should fully feel like you can do anything you want to do and you can be the first. Like, ask yourself that question, why not me? Um, And that's what I did. I was like, I can be the first South Asian woman to build a multi, you know, whatever beauty brand that, changes the world. I, I really believed that to my core and I've spoken into existence and I'm a full believer of manifestation. So if I was telling a 20 year old girl, I would say like, you can do this. And just like, it's, it's this, I, I, to be honest, sometimes I wake up and I look in the mirror and I tell myself like, you're fearless, like be fearless because that kind of mantra in my own brain, um, you, that confidence exudes in the room. So everyone else around mm. you starts to feel like, damn, she, she, she got this. She could be yeah, the first, she actually could be the person I would invest mm-hmm. in to do this first. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's just important for girls to realize like, just cause it hasn't been done doesn't mean that they can't be the first mm-hmm. to do it. No, I love that. Yeah. I, I really do. And, and cl- clearly you have shitloads of personality. That's, that's become <laughs> like apparent just in these short time we've been talking to you. And like you said, that does really speak volumes when you walk into a room of influential people you can have all the best ideas in the world right but sometimes people just close up because i don't know the story mm-hmm. they've told themselves or the story they've been told mm-hmm. by their parents Shh, yeah. don't speak until it's, you know, yeah. don't know it's not your place to speak or blah 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 all those That's kind exactly. of things that we're told mm-hmm. yeah i think um the other thing like with the egg freezing stuff like i feel very yeah, oh yeah eggs that- yeah the egg, yes, egg Sorry, and makeup. I got, we got off the eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, this, I just wanted to say this because I think a, when I did publicly say I was freezing my eggs, the amount of what, girls who were just like, thank you so much for saying you're doing this because I have absolutely been, there's a stigma behind it of you can't mm. do that. When I first told my parents, they were freaked out because they were like, that means you're not going to have babies soon. <laughs> and I was like, mm. that is what that means. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. And so I think it's just important to, Again, like create your own path, your own journey. Don't do it because of somebody in your life telling you, you have to have babies at this moment. Mm-hmm. If you want it and if you want to be a housewife, that's a beautiful thing. Being a housewife, being a mom is a full-time job. A thousand percent. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. needs to be appreciated more. It a thousand percent is. But I just don't want people to feel like they have to get married and have kids at a certain age. And um, I hope that I'm, I'm like proof that like, like literally like you said, Tara, you can't have it all just in phases. 
Yeah. There's no exact timeline. And I think that's like, that's part of the biggest misnomer that everyone has all these year benchmarks. And that's why people dread birthdays. Mm -hmm. I've always hated Mm -hmm. when people dreaded Mm -hmm. birthdays because it's like it's they true, yeah. timelines where they think if i haven't yeah. done xyz by this time yep. then they don't uh, look forward to their birthday or that i'm a failure i didn't you know i didn't get this by this age yeah huh? you know and like you said you create your own path and i think one of the things for me that i think is so important that i always love um sharing with others and especially younger people is you know, you don't have to let the stories of your parents mm-hmm. and your your past experiences don't have to define you. So just because Absolutely. you went through a negative experience and you hit a wall, that doesn't mean that that's going to be the way it is for the rest of your life. You can change. You yeah. can shift it. You know? Um, I love that. Yeah. So I think that's... Be the change. No. Exactly. It's beautiful. But one, one thing just quickly before we let you go, because I know that you, you have to leave us soon. I'm uh, going to Santa Barbara today with our friend Jay Shetty and Ravi. I'm excited. Oh, oh you are. Amazing. Tell them yeah. we said, tell them we oh, said what's up. Be so fun. I will. Um, one, I have to know your opinion on this. Um, what, is, what is your opinion on filters? On, mm. on on Instagram, yeah. on all these skin smoothing apps. What's your opinion on that and what it does to girls and their mentality and their, their whole everything, self-esteem? Great question. And by the way, I was not expecting you to say that. That's a great question. Um, plastic surgery and filters, I have, I have a thought on all of it. I think I want people to do it because they want to do it and it's something that they find to be playful. The same idea goes with the contacts. Um, mm. Put it in, put it, use it. It's, it. It also goes as deep as makeup, right? All of these things, I want to shift the mentality of I'm using it and I'm doing it because of the standard of beauty that I'm told is beautiful to I'm doing it because I choose to do it. It's a personal Mm -hmm. choice that I want for myself. I don't judge anyone who wants to get plastic surgery, who wants to use filters, who wants to use makeup, right? Because at the end of the day, they're all different layers of the same idea of people could argue it's trying to mask who you are. Right. But what I see it as, as it, it, we have to flip that narrative of what makeup actually stands for and what beauty and filters stand for is um, these are all things that we need to have control over more so than society and what they tell us we need to be and more just a thing that we want to do because we want to do it. Like makeup to me is a way of self-expression. It's a way that you can walk mm-hmm. out the door and feel good about mm-hmm. yourself. But for me and something that I really hope with Live Tinted we change is feeling just as comfortable without it. Um, and so right. filters is a weird line in between because uh, it's scary how much we're getting comfortable with what we look like with a filter on our face, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I make it a point. I do use filters, but again, it's because it's like fun. Or in that day, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I, got, I'm, I didn't sleep, so I used a filter. Mm-hmm. But I just as much as I use a filter, show myself without anything in my mm-hmm. raw and real bare face because it's just as important to feel confident in both versions of yourself. That's kind of how I feel about it. Can I ask you a question quickly, T? Yeah. You're a customer. So as in like, you know, live tinted, you're a consumer. We don't have, we don't have sponsors yet. So right. before we get to the end of this podcast, <laughs> give me a few years, I'll be there. Yeah, exactly. There we go. So I would say as a customer, as a, as a consumer of these products, like what are some of the products that you love? This is a little bit of ab- free advertising. What are some of the products that you have appreciated that come from Live Tinted that you couldn't live without? And uh, what was the importance uh, of having that stuff? Uh, you know what? So Deepika knows I, my makeup case was stolen last week. What? Yeah. Worst thief, by the way. Yeah, what a crap a makeup face. No, no, bro. He guess what worse. he actually. It's, st- it's worse. Yeah. Guess what he actually stole. He or she actually stole. What? Uh, a diaper bag. No. Okay. Yes. Well, that, that actually that's poetic justice. <laughs> Where this happened? Yeah. A, a, a dirty yeah. diaper bag or a, a no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, look. It look. It looks like it would be. Backpack. Imagine that. Like, oh, what's in this? Oh. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> so it was a black. It was a black backpack with a gold zip. So it kind of looked like a fashion bag. Yeah. So they probably thought it had some. So yeah. they opened it up to find literally diapers, wipe, wipe, wipes, and yeah. some and used makeup, case, which yeah. you couldn't do anything I with. Wish it. I could have been there for that. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Of all the things, yeah, yeah. the diaper bag. I know. All right, guys, yeah, what yeah. we got here? Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, that was the biggest waste of a feeling. Yeah, yeah. of, of a robbery. Yeah. Of, a, of a robbery. Yeah. But go on. Yeah. But when, when, your, when your makeup hasn't been stolen. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, no, so <laughs> so I, I did a post and I shared because one of the first things that I went to repurchase was my live tinted hue stick in perk, um, which I absolutely, you know, uh, Deepika had given it to me in February when I was in LA and it's become a major staple in my case. Um, and it's funny because I've shared about it before and people will often say like, oh, I didn't know that you had dark circles, Tara, you know, like I didn't know you needed to use concealer. I'm like, I'm human like all of you. <laughs> There are days where I wake up and I didn't, and I mm -hmm. don't look like I got enough sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but what I love about your product is how it's so light and it's so natural. I have it on right now. Um, and I think it's true. What we dealt, I used to use like a beige concealer, but that looked like I was wearing makeup. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. what I love about your product is that people are like, wait, are you wearing it? I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, I have. And that's the whole mm. point. It's not making me up to look different. It's just enhancing what's there, you know? That's um, the whole premise of the brand. But I also have to say, shout out to you for buying the product because really like supporting small businesses is so important right now. Mm. And I'm, you know, I would have sent it to you in a heartbeat, but it means the mm. world that you took, like spent the money because that's, mm truthfully how these businesses thrive is on the support of other of people course. so i really appreciate yeah. it no I, the best you know girl. what <laughs> you know what i think that obviously we own a brick and mortar yoga studio um hey. so like my heart breaks for small businesses when i see them close now and, and obviously i became that much more aware of it after running a studio and seeing how much work and people put their life savings into these businesses yeah. and then to see like somebody's closed down you're like oh my god that's a family mm -hmm. somebody owned it you know so um yeah. so i'm a big believer and i'm always so grateful for like when my friends or family buy my spirit warrior gear or if they come mm -hmm. and take a class and they pay full price that means so much yeah. to me as well so i kind of i'm very um aware of it and i always want to spread that love back definitely yeah, yeah. Well, this was bloody lovely. Aww. I love this chat. bloody lovely. See, yeah. it's nice to have some female energy on the podcast. <laughs> no, of yeah. course. Indeed. Oh, Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. But also like a nice little balance of, you know, some chuckles and some deepness. And yeah. we learned some stuff and, yeah. and learn about the older red, red thing under the old bags and stuff, which was wow. <laughs> Um, you, to do, you should do a funny TikTok doing makeup in some way. Like that would be oh really funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ava right. doing his makeup. Oh, there you go. You know, I tell you, you something. Live tinted products. There as, you go. as a man, as a man in the entertainment industry, we are so used to getting makeup done on ourselves. That's true. That's true. Okay. So much. And some guys shy away from it. Oh, I'm not going to. I ask. Okay. When I go somewhere, I'm like, are you, are you serious right now? There's no makeup department in this place? Yeah. What kind of stuff? I don't care, bro. But you know, it's That's so funny. That's a real man. That takes confidence. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, but anyway, we could probably talk for hours, but yeah, thank you so totally. much. You go enjoy you. your wonderful enjoy your time today. Have so much yeah, fun and good you. luck with your travels. Thank yeah, you. And... I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely, man. It's been so, so nice. And also, obviously, just before we go, can you, you know, give, give you all shout outs of where people can see your stuff and buy your stuff and all the good stuff? Yes. LiveTinted.com, L-I-V-E-T-I-N-T-E-D. That's all I really care about. LiveTinted.com. <laughs> there you go. All right. Love thank that. Thank you. Oh, Bye, thank you, Deepika. <laughs> all right. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.